Azerbaijanis continue to attack Armenian civilians, will Armenia respond? And is there really going to be an election on June 20th? Did Pashinyan really resign? We'll talk about those things here coming up. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sovereign Artsakh. I'm Michael Gavlak, a Hollywood producer focused on Armenia. <coughs> Excuse me. And also focused on the story of Sogomon Talerian. Uh, just a reminder, at the very end of this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about Sogomon Talerian and what he was doing exactly 100 years ago today. Uh, before I move on, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Share it with someone. Uh, but uh, if you if you've already done all of those things, click like on this video. Click like. That helps the, the uh, algorithms on YouTube. All right, let me read this. Goris deputy mayor informs about Azerbaijani hooliganism against van transporting bodies of victims. And this is from yesterday. Uh, deputy mayor of Goris town, Irina Yolian, uh, informs that overnight, March 28th to 29th, Azerbaijanis threw stones at a van transporting bodies of killed servicemen breaking the windows of the van. The driver tells that he left Stepanakert at night driving to Goris. There was a heavy fog. He felt that the car was attacked with stones. The incident took place at 1.30 a.m. The driver did not stop, continued driving, and reached Goris. Finally, finally, who will ensure the safe movement of peaceful civilians? Armin, Armin Press reports. Irina uh, Yulian wrote on her Facebook page, adding that there are facts showing the aggressive behavior of, our, of the Azerbaijani side, which must be recorded and measures should be be taken to stop it. A similar incident took place on March 25th. Armenian motorists were uh, unharmed after being assaulted in a stone-throwing incident in a village of Artsakh, with perpetrators being Azerbaijani troops who were traveling escorted by Russian peacekeepers along a road in the territory of Artsakh. The Azerbaijani soldiers threw stones from their vehicles at Armenian residents of Artsakh who were traveling on the same road. One of the motorists was able to avoid being hit, but the motorist driving behind him couldn't. Artsakh Interior Ministry spokesperson Hunan Tadevosian told Armin Press. After the incident, the residents, residents of the town immediately blocked the convoy from traveling further, and the Russian peacekeepers and the commanders of the Azerbaijani troops exited their vehicles and apologized. Got to get those people under control. Meanwhile, there are still prisoners of war being held by the Azerbaijani side and none being held by the Armenian side. Stone attack by Azerbaijanis cannot remain unresponded, President of Artsakh's Parliament. President of the National Assembly of Artsakh, Artur Tomasian, Tomasian visited the Foreign Ministry of Artsakh and met with Foreign Minister David Babayan. Armin Press was informed from the press service of the National Assembly of Artsakh. Foreign, ministry, uh, foreign policy priorities of the country were discussed. Artur Tovmasian referred to the meeting with Foreign Minister of Armenia, Ara Ayvazian. Today, number one problem for the security of Artsakh is that the recent so-called activation of Azerbaijanis cannot remain unresponded. I am speaking about the incidents of attacking Armenian cars with stones. The sides discussed issues related to raising this and other issues at, the inter at international arenas. The President of the National Assembly of Armenia emphasized the importance of finding a settlement to finding a settlement to azerbaijan karbakh conflict in the sidelines of the OSE Minsk Group co-chairs. He also talked about the necessity of deepened relations with different countries, particularly Russia. All right. Uh, cannot remain unresponded. No, I don't think he's saying Armenia is going to respond or has or should respond, but it needs to be some international pressure. I just, it's frustrating that this is so one-sided that the Armenians are being targeted, that the hostilities continue, and that the international community has has not moved more quickly. And so Pashinyan is also addressing, we must make decisions that will ensure Armenia's long-term sustainable, sustainable development. So he's apparently announced his resignation, but he still has to act as prime minister. I just... I can only imagine what's going through his head as frustrating as it must be i'm sure he loves his country but um as a politician there's only so much you can do and perhaps he's done a lot of things wrong i again i don't i'm not siding with or against him he's stepping down he feels that's the right decision or i guess he's required to if there's going to be a, a special election 
I'll mention that s- special election here at the end, but let me just read this. A Security Council session chaired by Prime Minister of Armenian, uh, Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan, took place on March 30th, as Armin Press was informed from the office of the Prime Minister of, Ar- of Armenia. Pashinyan said at the beginning of the session, as a result of the well-known developments, the security environment surrounding Armenia and Artsakh has undergone significant transformations, and we have to continuously el- evaluate the new challenges that we face in the situation. Speaking about the long-lasting blockade of Armenia, Prime Minister Pashinyan noted that it has alienated Armenia from the region to some extent. Armenia has only one land route to its strategic partner, which is greatly dependent on the weather conditions. This results in numerous challenges, including security uh, security challenge. In this new situation, we have to assess the opportunities that we can to be used for eliminating the blockade of Armenia. But on the other hand, we have to... record that this process cannot take place at the expense of Armenia's vital interests, but the opposite. We must be able to fully protect our interests, the interests of Artsakh, of course, being ready for some kind of a cooperation. In general, opening the communications is one of the key topics we are going to discuss today. The issue of um, uh, the issue of important and interesting, important and interesting, but has numerous nuances that we have to consider. All right. As, as is is common some things are lost in the translation it's a rough translation when I read these but you get the idea but regarding the elections Armenian president now that's Sarkisian this guy Armin Sarkisian says June 20 snap parliamentary elections are likely to be held so apparently this isn't set in stone what I read yesterday is Pashinyan has offered his resignation because his resignation would would activate an emergency or special election um, and because that seems to be the only or the best route to settling the um, really the unsettled nature of the, the political upheaval in Armenia right now. In response to Russian RBK TV's question about snap elections in Armenia, President of Armenia, Armin Sarkisian, said the elections might be held. When asked why he said the elections might be held, Sarkisian said the day will be determined when the relevant process begins. The three political parties represented in parliament have agreed that the election need to be held on June 20, but there has to be a certain process in parliament, including the prime minister's resignation. All the documents need to be on my desk, and after that, the date will be set. According to the current constitution, the president has the choice to either sign the document or forward it to the constitutional court. I can't sign anything for June 20, he said, adding that he has pictured and pictures another way out of the political crisis. So he's contemplating maybe there won't be an election. I mean, even though the headline says it's likely, but he says he's pictured and pictures another way out of the political crisis. In many countries, the government re- reigns or the government resigns in such situations, and the le- and this leads to the formation of a government of national unity, either with or without the, the participation of political parties, and only with the participation of professionals, Sarkeesian said, adding that this government will make decisions on the Constitution and the Electoral Code. So it seems to be still up in the air. I don't know. All right. Remember, uh, uh, subscribe to this channel, share these videos, and click the like button now. I mentioned that I was going to, in the past, show you where Sogun Tulirian was in prison. Now, those who have no idea who Sogun Tulirian is, he's the assassin, the Armenian hero who assassinated uh, essentially the Hitler of World War I. I know a few historians that would cringe at that reference, but it's it's a shorthand reference to there was a genocide in World War I, and there was a leader of the country that committed that genocide who actually gave the orders, and so in that regard, he is the Hitler of World War I. And this, it was it happened in Berlin, and this is the prison, or the jail. I mean, this is current day, but this, this compound, this is the courthouse where the Sogum and Tulerian trial took place, and it is attached to the prison. Um... I'm not sure which of, I think these structures up here are closer to the courthouse were, were there then. I think this might be a new structure. Maybe some of this was um, bombed or targeted in, in World War II, but this courthouse was built in like 1908. So it was fairly new in 1921 when the trial of Sogamon Tulerian took place here. But this is where he spent uh, almost three months awaiting trial. 
Now, what was Sogolman Talerian doing 100 years ago? Today, he was sitting in a jail cell on in this piece of property in Berlin. Let's zoom out. This is Berlin. Zoological Garden in Berlin, actually, right here. Sogolman spent some time walking through this garden. But there it is. Oh, you just saw it. Berlin. Berlin, Germany. Zoom out. All right. Now, let me read something. So he was given a Bible within a few weeks of being in prison. So today being, shoot, what's the date? Yeah, today being March 30th, uh, tonight would be his 16th night in jail. And so it was early on that he was given a Bible. He went to chapel on a Sunday and a chaplain visited him in his cell. Um, broken English, they were trying to speak in French because the chaplain didn't speak Armenian and, and Solomon didn't speak German. And so there was a common tongue. They were trying to communicate in France, French. Solomon's French was very spotty. But let me just read from the memoir. Lo and behold, so the chaplain left and said he was going to give him a Bible. So lo and behold, while I was sitting in my cell after the chaplain's departure, not knowing how to kill time, the door was opened and the guard handed me a volume comprising the Old and New Testaments in Armenian. As I leafed through the book, my eye caught one of St. John's revelations where it was written. I saw a beast with ten horns and seven, seven heads rising out of the sea. There were ten royal crowns on its horns and blasphemous names on its heads. The beast I saw was like a leopard with the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave the beast his power and throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast appeared to be mortally wounded, but the mortal wound was healed, and the whole world marveled and followed the beast. They worshipped the dragon who had given authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can wage war against it? Okay, this is out of the book of Revelation. Obviously, he referred to that, St. John's Revelation. The beast was given a mouth to speak, arrogant and blasphemous words, and authority to act for 42 months. And the beast opened its mouth to speak blasphemies against God, and to slander his name and his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. I'm going to skip down. He just continues to read... Uh, from the book and then he comments on it I knew that the massacre of the Armenians had lasted 42 whole months from May 1915 until October 1918 that is to say from the first deportation order to the armistice of Mudros and I was struck by the idea that the beast referred to by St. John the Evangelist was Talat himself when suddenly the door opened I was told I had a visitor I was then taken to an antechamber where three so he, a an Armenian priest came to visit him, and the priest uh, said, "In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you for having slain the beast and avenged all of us. Soon I shall travel to Rome. Before I do so, I will come here to receive your confession, and based on which, to request from the Pope of Rome to grant you his blessing for your patriotic work." An officer intervened. Okay, and then he thought, "How amazing." Well, he said, the visit was wonderful, the visit from this monk, as if by St. John himself. How amazing I thought, I thought of it in my, on my way back to my cell, holding the Jerusalem cross. So he's given a cross. And he, so, this is a young guy who was raised in a Christian home. I'm not saying he was this, you know, he wasn't walking around quoting scripture and preaching Jesus. He was he's just from a Christian culture, familiar with uh, Christian theology. And here he, this this is very common today for people to look at the horrible things happening in the world and think this must be the beast and that must be the Antichrist and this is the end of the world. And uh, of anybody in the last 100 years, 150 years, you would say the Armenians being massacred, the Christians being massacred by um, the Muslims or the, the Turks, the young Turks, would have a right to think that that this is the end of the world, that this is the beast coming to destroy them, the end is near. Um, it just goes to show that it's it's pretty common for Christians to look at the horrible things going on in the world and think the end, end of the world is coming. So, But I, I found this fascinating that he too was of that mindset and that he, even the priest that came to him said, you've slain the beast. Um, fascinating, fascinating stuff. All right. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Subscribe and share and like.